What strategies can a special needs teacher observe in the mainstream to help children with emotional and behavioural difficulties? And what tips can they offer to improve upon those strategies? Sally Cranny teaches at the Primary Learning Achievement Centre, or PLAC, for pupils with EBD at Gibbs Green School, West London. I think it's really important that the special school teacher and the SENCO and the mainstream teacher work hand in hand to effectively include students in mainstream school. I think that when the relationship is really good between all those three key people, the child has a greater chance of success because we're using the same techniques, we're sharing expertise as well as resources and that I think is fundamental to the success of inclusion. Sally visits St Leonard's Primary School near Hastings, where she joins Senko, Penny Nice and Year 3 teacher Sarah Corrigan. Oh, no, I want you to write the big day. You've got it there. Change places if you had a really good half term. The children in Sarah's class are of mixed ability and 14 of them are on the SEN register. So if you were outside on the playground, you're playing football and um, you're playing with your friends, what, what kind of tone are you using then? What, how, are you angry? Are you talking really softly? How does your voice change? It's loud. Loud. So it's quite loud. Is it angry? Sally loud? knows from experience that a successful circle time with a class like no. this isn't easily achieved. I can see in your circle you have numerous kids with behavioural difficulties, yet they were very safe and supported and behaved brilliantly then. How do you build an environment where circle time can work really effectively? At the beginning, circle time was much shorter. We did shorter circle times, um, maybe five minutes, ten minutes, moving into spaces, sitting down, listening, the idea of moving around the circle and just being able to say something or just missing a turn if they didn't want to. Does the way we talk to people matter? <coughs> Brooklyn? Well, it depends on, like, it depends on whether you shout at them, then it might hurt their feelings or something. It's a brilliant answer, good boy. What about, uh, By practising it weekly, um, it builds up the trust between the children, builds up the trust between the children and myself. Um, allowing them to feel um, free to say what they want to say. I think also it's important to start the circle time with something fun, something that's easy, something that they all can do. They can do even if they don't agree with what's been said. They can join in and they can feel part of it. I think that's the key. And then I think not to force children into doing things, not to pressurise them, just to allow them, if they don't want to take part, and they sit in the circle and they listen. I think that's a skill in itself. Nothing's the matter. Um, some of these children find um, being in a circle, being asked to do certain things in front of everyone else, very intimidating. I take them out of the circle and working on what we've done in the circle gives them an opportunity to um, practice, perform before they have to come back to the circle. Sarah makes use of role play in circle time. So they then have the confidence to come back and perform and to show what they've done, what they've learnt. Excellent. Stop there. That's brilliant. Sally offers a strategy from her special school for Sarah's circle time. Quite often I'll say to my learning mentor, I'm feeling 6 out of 10 and this is how I feel. And I'll get him to tell me how he's feeling. How do you feel out of 10? Also, at the beginning of the day and after lunch, we encourage the students to tell each other how they feel out of ten, so that they're aware of being able to help those students who are feeling really low. Four. So, you feel good. Four is I'm feeling bad. I feel unhappy or tired today. You people that feel really good, you might be able to help Kyle I, I to help to help and help improve so that he can... He will be able to learn and have a good afternoon. I, I guess that I could um, come in in one of your circle time sessions and model that for your TA to see us doing it. I think with all these social skills and ideas, people often say, how can we do it in a mainstream class? There is only one adult, 30 kids. But by modelling it amongst adults, then they can do it amongst peers. And I think students would get just as much out of telling each other how they feel as to telling a teacher. And how do you decide who does what on the game? At St Leonard's, classes are paired to encourage social support between pupils. Sarah's Year 3 class is teamed with a Year 5 class. 
In a weekly exercise called Response Partners, they work together in small mixed groups designing and making board games. I thought the response partner exercise was a fantastic activity and really successful. Watching the students, several skills that I saw them demonstrate were cooperation, speaking and listening skills, teamwork, leadership. These sorts of skills are vital to develop and they're doing it naturally. Is there any gig of people? What I would suggest is to really big up those skills and say, this team has got great cooperation at the moment. This is a skill that they're really demonstrating. This team here, or this person's being a fantastic listener. One thing that we do at the plaque is each week we have a focus, so it might be listening or friendship or cooperation, so that everyone around the school is saying those same words and picking up and reinforcing when students are demonstrating those skills, because otherwise the focus is too broad. I think it would be a really neat way for the SENCO to work with class teachers because you to get the whole school would be working towards achieving those learning targets and what they're learning in nurture group will be reinforced back into their classroom. It's building upon what we're already doing, yes. but it's something that I think would be possible in a mainstream school for us to actually have a focus on a weekly basis on a particular social skill mm -hmm. and then be praising every child in the school that we see doing, you know, all, all the teachers, everybody working in the school will know what that focus is. And, even if it's seen on the playground or in the corridor, mm. be able to praise that. What's everyone been doing in your group? There's um, making the boards, and then Joseph and Katie was making the um, mouse, the big mouse in Excellent. the middle. I think it'd be really valuable for students to reflect not only as a team, but also to reflect as Year 3 students and Year 5 students as to what they have brought into that team and their roles and their social skills that they've brought. I think that's a really good idea as well. I mean, and it does bring back that point of whole reflection, doesn't yes. it? Whole school reflection mm. on, on and everybody being aware of what everyone else is looking for yeah. and perhaps encouraging the children with each other to be very aware as well and say, you know, be able to tell you, yeah. Mrs. You know, Miss Corrigan, look, he's been very, very cooperative today. I find that's a really effective teaching tool to reinforce a social skill and I call it positive dobbing where mm. They come in after the lunch or after a lesson and they tell me something really positive that someone else has done. Mm -hmm. And it's a great way for them to reinforce those skills in each other. Job. Maybe someone who could tell me something about someone else's behaviour out in the playground. I got... Uh, can I dub on A because... When I said, when, because he played well yeah. and... When, when our team won, we didn't all shout, oh, we won, we won, we shake hands. Fabulous. Sally observed further use of year group support in the sports mentor scheme, where year six pupils are trained to organise lunchtime games for year one pupils. So what do you do as sports mentors? We sort of play with the little ones and just... Uh, make them enjoy the uh, playtime, uh, lunchtime, really more than they. So if they get left out, we can ask them if they want to play and stuff. And we can also teach them a couple of new games, and they're quite. They've got lots of exercise in them, like running around and stuff. They've got lots of different games in them, and it just tells you like the three things that you need to do to just to make sure that they're listening. And it's just like, explain clearly, keep them active and keep it safe, really. They, they learn manners for their teachers, they learn new games, which, they, which most of them they thoroughly enjoy. I think the younger children enjoy playing with us because it boosts their confidence playing with older children and they just have so much fun with us and really helps them 
get along with each other. Jump Ahead is an early intervention programme to help year one pupils with physical activities and coordination skills. I think you can assume that all students have the experience of throwing and catching a ball because some don't. And that has a huge effect on their confidence. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I agree entirely. What, what we're trying to do is fill some big gaps yeah. in all these different activities that we do. Whatever it is, you're trying to fill some of those developmental gaps. And, and they may, it may not be anything to do with, with reading and writing as such, but it has a major knock-on effect to their actual learning. So here, the, what they're practising is coordination, being able to roll a ball, catch a ball, and it develops their confidence in a wider sense. So when they go into a PE lesson, they feel more confident. Um, and, you know, just on the playground as well, they feel more confident. And it all helps with social skills, because the more confident they are, the better they are socially. Really. I think so. what I really like about this activity is it's giving children that experience in a small group, so they can build up the friendships and with lots of adult support, so they're safe and they're supported. Now we practice... Back in the Year 3 class, Sally observes a history lesson in which the pupils sew an image based on the Bayer tapestry. What have I got to do now? Oh! Stacey, nice and quiet, lovely. Tie a knot in the end. Are you right there, Joe? No. Sit up nicely. The social skills that are being demonstrated at the moment are good concentration, hand-eye coordination, working nicely with their peers, speaking appropriately to their fellow students. And these skills could also be rewarded and commented on to let the students know that they're doing very well socially as well as getting on with the task. You are doing so brilliantly, young man. I'm so amazed with you. Your concentration is just blowing my mind away. Do you find it easy? Mm, I find it like... Students with emotional behaviour difficulties have such a high degree of fear of failure and are real perfectionists. For them to attempt, engage and enjoy an activity like this, they need to be in a safe and supported environment. This is why I think this activity is working so well in this classroom. I think one of the very important um, things from today uh, is, is this emphasis on um, training for the whole staff. Everybody needs to be coming from the same position, really. Mm. That really hurt. Get on. And you were talking about empowering all the adults in the school in the same way, that they all have the same ability to praise children for doing certain things. So it's identifying those social skills um, and getting everybody really on board with developing them and improving them. What I was really impressed with today was the amount of strategies that you've put in place and also the diversity of the strategies that you have across the whole school. To see in response partners the older students working really well with the younger students in the mainstream classroom, to seeing the playground mentors, that not only develops the skills of the mentor, but also provides a really safe environment for those students that find socialising really difficult. Quite often people will say, why should we have this intervention? Because it's a lot of work to put in positive interventions for one or two students. But the truth of the matter is, a lot of our students in our mainstream classrooms are having emotional difficulties and do have emotional needs that haven't been met, even if they're not outplaying that in behaviour difficulties. And these really positive strategies that you have in place in this school are meeting those needs.